It's my privilege to be here to visit the Reckitt booth, manufacturer of Lysol and many other great products. And I'm going to ask a few questions of an expert in the industry, Brian Leaflad, who's a research and development senior manager, global business solutions with Reckitt. Brian, we've done this before, yep. first time in person. Yes, thank you, nice to meet you. Our focus today is to talk about something that I'm not really familiar with, mm -hmm. but you're an expert on. It's a QMRA study and what that means for the industry and what we should do. Thinking about the upcoming season of flus and, yep. and colds and all those different issues. Can you start with your top concerns right now with that in mind and what we need to do? So as you mentioned, cold and flu season is coming up, right? And it goes through cycles. It happens every year, but we don't necessarily know how severe it's going to be one year from the next. And so part of what some of the health professionals will do is they'll try and guess essentially how bad it's gonna be based on what happens in the Southern hemisphere because they tend to experience it before we do. Then it comes here, now we try and deal with it and everybody's getting sick. So with, with knowing that it's coming, that's one of the things that we try and think about is, so what can we do in advance to prepare for cold and flu season? One of the things that we do is, obviously we focus on products. Mm -hmm. That's the first part. So we have to have the products that work, the processes to use them and, and the procedures, make sure all of that is exactly the way we want it to make sure that it's the most effective for the customers. The second part of it though, is really understanding human behavior. And that's the, in some ways, one of the more interesting things people don't always think about from scientists, right? They think we're in the lab, mixing chemicals, which we do, right? But in order to make sure that those things actually work the way we want them to, we also have to understand human behavior. And that's where the QMRA study comes in that you mentioned. So it stands for Qualitative Microbial Risk Assessment. Okay. All right, so basically it's a technique where we will go in and we will take a microbe one that is not at risk for causing disease. So there's bacteria all over the place. Not all of them are bad. Some cause disease, some don't. So we use one that does not, so we don't have to worry about anybody getting sick if they come in contact with it. We'll go into a facility, we'll pick a couple of locations that people use, something they touch frequently. And then we'll put some of this microbe on the surface. You can't see it, you don't know it's there. Now people come through, they just go about their normal day, they touch it, now it's on their hand. Mm -hmm. Then they move to, and they go somewhere else and they touch that. Now it's on that surface. And so it gets transferred from surface to surface to surface to surface. And so the technique of it is part of it, the strategy behind it. We look at in a, in a given space, how do people normally use that space? Right? We, the initial study we did was in a hotel as an example. Uh, and so we, we inoculated, we put some of this germ on different surfaces around the hotel lobby. And then we would just watch people. And so you go in and see who touched the doorknob. Did they touch the countertop? Did they then go to the elevator and push the buttons on the elevator? Transferring those germs. Transferring those germs all over the place. Okay. Yes. And we, and we found a, a few really interesting things that on average, pretty much everybody that went through there touched at least two different surfaces. So it's not, you don't, you don't always think about, well, I didn't really touch anything, but you do. And we, we just don't even, re, don't even realize that. So people touched on average, you don't over two surfaces a piece. Those germs then spread from one location that we started at in four hours, it would spread to 13. That's kind of scary. A, it, a little bit, yes. Okay. <laughs> right? Yeah, a little bit. And so that's why, you know, we did this study in a hotel, but if you think about it, like if you and I were going into the office, I get to the door first, I grab the door handle, I pull the door open, you walk in in front, I go behind you. You now go to the elevator, push the elevator. I come into the elevator. We go our separate ways. Both of us have touched different surfaces, and we now touch different surfaces after that. We may touch a common one. We may not. And so it's really that understanding that we can go back and we swab those surfaces. And so we'll collect any, any germs that are on there, take them back to the lab, culture it, grow it up, see what's there. And then we can identify both what that germ is so we can make sure it yes it started on the doorknob because we put it there now it's on the this is handle. Amazing. now it's on the handle for the refrigerator because we've measured it from there and we can measure like how much of it's there so now we know did i touch the doorknob and the door handle did you also touch the doorknob and the handle all did, proven yeah and so we go through and we can actually quantify it and measure that so that we know, we, so we can we can do almost like a heat diagram where you can see like a population density type of a diagram. Yeah. And you can see these are the spots that people touch the most often. 
we know those are the biggest risk for transmitting disease causing germs. And then you plan your disinfecting, cleaning, your entire protocol based on that. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Yep. You talked about hard surfaces. You talked about the elevator doorknob or the button. You talked yep. about surfaces that are non-permeable. What about soft surfaces? Can you? Not that particular study because we we were focused on hard surfaces okay. for that specific Fair enough. one. But we did a, we did a different kind of study with our microbiology lab, our team that did this, and they were looking at soft surface transmission. And so you know, ask the question: What happens when you're sick? What's the recommendation? Sneeze into your elbow. Right, it's that's that's what we should do. On, right, it's better than sneezing on your hands. Then you need to go wash your hands, and not everybody does. That's, that's right? the idea. But what happens when you sneeze into your elbow? Where do the germs go? Now the germs are in. I imagine they go everywhere. And they're in whatever fabric you had on you, right? And so, the study was a it was a soft surface to person to soft surface type of a study that that our microbiology team did, and so they could prove that germs do actually transfer from soft surface to soft surface from soft surface to hand. And so like if, if you if you had germs on your sleeve and I just come up and did this, I could get them on my hand. Then you go touch something over now there. Now I go touch a hard surface over there and now it started on your sleeve and went to my hand and now it's over here. Okay. Right, so, we, so we've been able to like prove that out and show how they do that. Sneezing, as you might imagine, causes more germs mm -hmm. than coughing, right? So you're-, you're The droplets. Send, yep, you're sending mm -hmm. more germs out. So sneezing is definitely a, big, a bigger risk. Um, and then it's, it links back to that QMRA study from a human behavior standpoint, just understanding what soft surfaces do people actually touch? Because then those, those are the ones that we then need to, to take care of and look at. You know, a, a drapery or a, a curtain, is anybody gonna touch that on a window? Probably not. No, unless they're opening it unless up. Unless they're opening right. and closing it. Right. And if they open it, and especially if they open it aggressively and it slides way out, it could aerosolize those droplets coming out. So this is particularly relevant because of COVID, right? Which elevated everybody's awareness of of airborne mm -hmm. diseases. We're used to thinking about germs on surfaces. That, I mean, our industry has been doing that for years, decades, right? But you don't always think about, well, if COVID is primarily airborne, why do I care about disinfecting a surface? This is why. Because airborne germs, things that are normally communicable by air, get on surfaces and they can go back and forth mm -hmm. from surface to surface, from surface to air, hard surface to soft surface, put it all together. You, hard surfaces are something we need to pay attention to. Soft surfaces are something we need to pay attention to and the human behavior that connects them all. So at this moment in time, I'm deciding I'm going to become a hermit. I'm going to stay <laughs> home, avoid everything. No. no, that's impossible. So with what we've talked about in mind, what mm -hmm. advice would you offer? to businesses and others, to prepare for the season coming up, to take this information and make it matter? There's a, there's a couple of main things. First of all, make sure you have the right products, right? So you have to go look at your business, whether you are an office building, a school, a retail location, a hotel, whatever. Look at the traffic flow through there and what are the surfaces that people are actually touching, that they're engaging with? Do you have a lobby that people sit in and so they're touching armrests on a chair or they may be touching the table that's in front of them. And when, and you look at those surfaces so you know, do you have hard surfaces, which pretty much everybody does. Mm -hmm. Do you have soft surfaces? Not everybody does, but a lot do. They do. So they're, they're really, really common. So you have to make sure that you understand, okay, I have both. So I need to make sure my product actually kills germs on hard surfaces and soft surfaces. If it doesn't do both, you need one for each. Okay. And all of that is related to the EPA registration that we all have to do if we're going to claim disinfection of any kind. It, it, there's different test methods for hard surface versus soft, met, soft surfaces that we have to do. So if you want to disinfect the soft surface, you got to make sure that you're using a product that actually says on there that it works on soft surfaces. It has usage instructions for soft surfaces. You're saying read the label and follow directions. Read the labels, absolutely. Okay. Read the label, follow the follow the, the manufacturer's instructions, because whatever they put on the label is also on the master text label, the MTL, and is okay. what the data that's been reviewed by EPA for the registration. So if it's on the label, EPA has reviewed it. So we're talking about the upcoming flu and cold season, mm -hmm. but is this are these concerns that you have limited to a few months? No, no, not at all. Okay. But people get sick all the time. They do. That's right? my question. Yeah, people people get sick all the time, and it really only takes one person, right? If if one person comes in, 
I mean, there was a, there was a University of Indiana study a while back that found we just on average people touch their faces like 23 times an hour. And it, uh, when I first read that, it was that's like, on yeah. average. That means a lot. Some, I mean, some do a lot more. A lot more. Yeah. yeah. When it's I first read that, I was suspicious. I'm like, I'm thinking, you know, I'm like, no way. But if you, if you start, then I started to pay attention. Like if I'm sitting at my desk working, how often do I, you know, give a little scratch or, you know, rub your nose or you go like this. That's and three. You, right. And that was three <laughs> in about five seconds. So we do, we, people do that human behavior. We're touching our faces yes. all the time. And so if a person is sick, even if they feel like they're well enough, they think, oh, I'm okay to go to work and they touch their faces. Now they're getting germs on their hands. Everything else that they touch in the building is contaminated and it can transfer from person to person. So yes, cold and flu is, tends to be seasonal late in the year here. Focus in the hard US, on that. But it's also present throughout the year. You know, COVID is still here. RSV is still here. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's all kinds of Ill, respiratory illnesses out there. They're all gonna be there. So if, it's more about have the right products, have a have the right program that is built around what are the surfaces I have, how do people use the space, what are they touching? If you have a good established program, that will be your baseline for the whole year. You're not constantly having to change. Oh, it's cold and flu season now. I need to do something. You just you'd have your base program built. Then if something, if there's an outbreak or a pandemic, if something severe happens, you already have a baseline to build off of. And now you can take the extra precautions, but you've got your standards set up for every week, every month, this is what you do. And with all this information we've discussed, this will help you to stay healthy all year long.